In section 4.2, we want to move on to the least squares regression line, also known as the line of best fit or um, the linear regression line, things like that. So let me just remind you that in 4.1, we were particularly interested in correlation, especially when it had to do with linear correlations. There, these types of relationships where they were positive linear and negative linear. And now we want to get more fine-tuned in that. We know we can measure the correlation, but we want to be able to see that line that we can kind of visually see in our mind's eye. We want to be able to come up with the equation for that line. And we're going to do that with regression. Now, back in the regression section, I, I don't want to get too much into the nuts and bolts of regression. Regression is really a very large topic um, that has tentacles and all sorts of things. And we are just going to be kind of hitting the highlights. For example, we're not going to do this regression by hand. Um, you're welcome because it's kind of complicated and tedious for that matter. So let's just start with the equation of the line. Well, you learn in most algebra classes in, in America, for example, that y equals mx plus b. And we want to tweak that a little bit. So our line is a regression line that models our data. So it has an equation that's close to that but it's y hat equals ax plus b. A is standing for our m, and there's reasons for that. Um, mainly, if you keep going on in more statistics, they start adding on more and more terms. So they want to be able to go a, b, c, d, e, and so on. m is an old-fashioned term standing for the French monte to mount, um, because you're climbing a staircase with a slope. So m is actually a very old-fashioned word or letter to use. So ax plus b um, will be what we are using. And instead of y, we want to say y hat. The y's are the actual data points, right? So the y hat is our regression line y. It's our predicted y. All right, so then let's get into the slope and the intercept. Now, this is a little bit um, algebraic in the way that we've written this up here. Um, it, it's a little bit off, so we want to be able to kind of fudge our words a little bit. So what we're going to say for the slope, first of all, the slope is a. So if you remember that from algebra class, whichever constant is multiplied by your x variable, that's your slope. And the interpretation of the slope is as follows. So on average, roughly, um, and that word is those two words are important. So on average, if, and then I put x in quotes because what x is will change for every problem. You're not going to write x. This is an algebra class. You're going to say whatever that variable is. If x increases by 1, y is expected to increase or decrease by approximately a. It doesn't mean it has to happen, right? This isn't algebra. It's, you know, this is the relationship that we see. All right. So, and again, with Y, you will also not say the letter Y. You'll write it out what it is in English, right, with words. So for the Y-intercept, it's 0, comma B, right, because it's the B, and then you have to make a point out of it, so 0, comma B. Yes, you will lose points if you don't put the 0 and the comma and the parentheses in there. And the interpretation of that is that when X is 0, and again, X is in quotes, because you'll say what it is, Y is expected to be approximately B. That doesn't mean that it actually is, right? It means it's expected to be around there. You're finding a trend line where you think things will be. It doesn't mean that it's going to be perfect. Now, we in this class are not going to find this regression equation by hand. We're going to use the calculator to do it for us, the TI-84 calculator to be specific. Um, and then the y-intercept for our course often doesn't make a lot of sense in the context of the situation. So if that occurs to you, you can either explain the y-intercept and then say it doesn't make sense um, to get some credit for it. Now, um, do not use the regression model to make predictions outside the scope of the model. <laughs> True, the thing about our regression models that when you use it, it's giving you your trend. It can be dangerous to get far away from your actual data, and that's what this is saying. If you go far away from your very from your data, which is saying right here, if the explanatory variable values are much larger or smaller than those observed in the data set, you can make predictions that are wildly inaccurate. All right, well, we'll see what that means when we look at an example, because this is all kind of nebulous at this point. So we found in section 4.1 that there is a linear relation between fertility rates and life expectancy for the 192 countries in 1962. And here they are. So you have your life expectancy right here and the fertility rates right here. This is all thanks to gapminder.com, very useful site, um, which will, you will use for your first project. And you can see that I have here the equation of the regression line given to you. Now we don't know how to find it yet, but in this case it was just given to us. 
All right. So we're going to explain the meaning of the slope in the, of the line in the context of the situation. So first, let's start off with what is the slope? So slope is a, and that's the one that's multiplied by x. So when you look at this equation, the slope is negative 5.0303. There we have it, Five, negative 5.0303. Now what this means is that whenever the x, which in this case is fertility rate, increases by 1, Right? That's what it says right up here. When x for the x increases by 1, the y is expected to, and in this case, decrease because this is a negative slope. So the life expectancy, that's your y variable, is expected to decrease by about 5.0303 years. And that's what I wrote. So on average, if a country's fertility rate increased by one birth per woman in 1962, is the year we're talking about, we would expect the life expectancy to decrease, or life expectancy of that country, to decrease by about 5.0303 years. And I'm using the word decrease because, of course, this is negative. All right, now what about the y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept is 0, comma b, which in this case would be 0, comma 82.528. All right, now there's the y-intercept right there. Now the question is, what does that mean? So remember what it says up here. If x is 0 then the y is expected to be approximately b. So if you had a fertility rate of zero, you'd expect your life expectancy to be about 82.8 or 528. Now realize that makes no sense at all. You could never actually have a country with zero life or zero fertility rate, right? That's impossible. So this is definitely outside the scope of the model because it's impossible to actually have a country that low, right? Our lowest birth rate is in the 1.6 or so range. But nevertheless, we've explained it and we included units, years, and births per woman. All right, now what about the U.S.? The U.S. had a life expectancy of 70.21 years in 1962. So calculate the expected fertility rate back then. All right, so interestingly, they're giving us life expectancy here. So when you see this right here, this life expectancy of 70.21 years, that is your y variable, life expectancy. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our equation and we're going to substitute 70.21 in for y. So let me write this out one second. There we have the equation right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and where there was a y, I'm going to put in 70.21. 528 I'm going to align these at the equal sign for our own, there we go, beautiful. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to subtract this 82.528 from both sides. So I need to subtract it. I'm going to be taking 70.21 take away 82.528. I'm going to grab a calculator for that. There's the calculator. All right, so 70.21 take away 82.528 makes negative 12.318. So I type that negative 12.318 equals negative 5.0303x. All right, now this is multiplication, so I need to divide to get the x by itself. So I'm going to take 12.318 and divide by, and then I want to make sure I use the negative symbol down here at the bottom of the calculator, not the subtraction symbol. That's a whole different thing. 5.0303, enter. And I get 2.449, so roughly 2.45. How many decimal places did they ask for? Oh, they didn't ask. So let's do 2. So x is approximately 2.49. And then the unit would be births per woman. All right, there's our answer right there. And there we have it. All right. So uh, this particular one, you were given the y value of 70.21, right? And then you had to find the x value. Of course, we could do it in reverse and give you the x value and ask you to find the y value. Both of those are valid things. This is actually the more difficult of the two right here. All right. Speaking of which, oh, there we go. A country had a fertility rate of 4.207 births per woman. So every woman in that country is having, on average, 4.2 kids. 
right? So using the linear equation given on the graph, what would be that country's life expectancy? So like I said, you can go in reverse here. So and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to take the 4.207 and we're going to put it right there in this equation. So y hat is four, five, negative 5.0303 times 4.207. Okay, now let me grab the calculator, and you can do this all at once, negative 5.0303 parentheses, 4.207, close your parentheses, plus 82.528, enter, and we get 61.37 roughly. And the unit for that would be years, because of course we're finding the life expectancy, right? They're giving us births per woman, which is not the Y, it's the X. So they're giving us the, the X value of 4.207, and they're asking us for the life expectancy, which would be years, right? The Y variable. Speaking of which, the other one went in reverse. It said calculate the expected fertility rate. So expected fertility that's x that they're asking you for. So the two problems have reversed themselves. Oops, not what I meant to do. All right, now I didn't make up the number 4.207 out of nowhere. That actually came from somewhere. It's the country of Gabon, which is in Africa. So it had a birth rate of 4.207 children per woman and a life expectancy of 40.387 back in 1962. So we're going to compute, draw, and label the residual on the graph. And what does that reveal about Gabon back in 1962? Okay, well the residual, there's a formula for it right here. The residual is your observed value y minus your predicted value y hat. That's your residual. So what we want to do is we want to take what we observed in real life, and that would be right here. That's real life, 40.387. So this was reality. And we want to subtract away what we thought it would be, which is the 61.3. Oh, let me do 6.6. Six. That way they have three decimal places for both of them. I think that works. 3.6.6? Three, six, six? Yep, 3.6.6. Six, six. That way I've got three for both. All right, so that makes our residual 40.387 take away 61.366, which is a negative 20.979, which is quite large, actually. Now I'm going to go back and label it on the graph, which I actually already did. It's right here. So here's Gabon. I picked Gabon because it sticks out there on like a sore thumb on its own. It's that point right down there. And then the vertical distance from the predicted line, that black line right there, to where that point is, that is your residual. Because your point is below the line, you actually have a negative residual here. So the line over predicts what you're going to be. In other words, this it overestimates, right? Because it is over where you thought it would be, which gets to the residuals, right? So if your real life value is lower than you predict, that means that you overestimate it believe it or not. So it's, it's a little strange, but the predicted part is the estimate part is actually the line. The real life part is the point. So if the line is over the point, that means you overestimate it. And if the line is higher, I mean, the, excuse me, if the point is higher, the real life value is higher, then that means you underestimate it because the estimate is the line itself. Right? So here's your estimate, that predicted dot down there, and then there's the real life observation right there. Okay? So you underestimate right, the point because the point was higher than you thought it would be. Or by the same token over here on the left, you overestimate because the real life point was lower than you thought it would be. Now the thing about a least squares regression line is it's the line that makes all those residuals as small as they can be. When you look at this graph, we only did Gabon, but every single one of these countries, and there's over 150 of them, or 120 of them, had their own, oh sorry, there's 192 of them, my bad. They each have their own vertical line, right? Every single dot has its own little vertical line. Some are really short, like this dot right here that's really close to the line, and some are really far away, like Gabon. 
the thing about this black line that we draw is it's the best line. It's the line that makes those residuals the smallest they can be. That's why it's called sometimes the least squares regression line, right? Because what they do is they take the residuals and they square them all to make them positive and then minimize them, make them as small as they can be for all the data. All right, we are done with this very long example, but that's all right because it explains a lot. We learned how to interpret slope, y-intercept, do calculations with the equation, and then what residuals are and how much they matter to us. And they matter quite a bit because they tell us whether we are under or overestimating. And also that's where the, the term least squares regression comes from. That line that you find is the one that has residuals as low as they can be overall for the whole data set. One other thing to keep in mind before I go away from this is that the residual is supposed to have the same unit as your data set, which my fault I didn't put this in, but it should be years, right? Because this was life expectancy. The Y values are both life expectancy. So it was 40.387 years, see the word years, minus 61.366 years. So your residual should also have years in it. All right, we're done with that example. I'll see you back here for the next one.